These drones are brutal. I'm at an inspection, so I thought I'd take a minute and make a video I've been thinking about making to teach you how to get your drone pilot's license. I'm here with my favorite inspector, Brad, from Brick Hickers. He used to have a drone. What happened, dude? It ended up in a tree. The first question really is, do you need a drone pilot's license? Well, if you're doing anything that's commercial or working for the government, you 100% need the Part 107 SUAS drone pilot's license. So if you're a real estate agent, you're shooting listing videos, yes. If you're a home inspector and you're taking pictures of roofs, yes, 100%. Anything for a commercial purpose, you need a license. If you're making vlog videos and posting affiliate links on YouTube, uh, a little bit gray, but you probably should. I'm a licensed private pilot and a licensed drone pilot. And this is Brad walking into my video again. <laughs> I don't shoot my own listings anymore, but I'm really glad that I have my license because I post a bunch of other videos and I wanna stay in compliance. How do I feel about it? How do I feel about having to get a license to fly my drone? Well, I'm one of those guys that doesn't like the government in my face, so typically I would be against something like this, but now that I have my license and I know what the rules are, and I know the dangers that are involved in flying a drone, I mean, we're flying, you know, two pound bricks in the sky that could fall out and could kill somebody, get sucked into an engine of a plane. It's potentially very dangerous, so I actually think it's a great idea that we need to be licensed and understand what we need to do, the precautions we need to take, and the rules we should follow to safely fly our drones. By the way, Jenny, uh, I hope you don't mind I'm using your house to make my video. I did, I, I did take my socks off to protect your beautiful floor. That's a great house. Thanks, Jenny. I really appreciate it. So I'm exactly like you. When I first got my drone, I Googled, do I need to get my license? And then how do I get it? And I saw all this stuff online and it looked super complicated. So I was a little bit afraid. But with a little more research, I realized that it's not that big of a deal. I figured out how I could get my drone pilot's license for just about five bucks. I'm gonna show you how you can do that too. I should clarify, the test is 150 bucks. I just mean you could spend about five bucks on study materials and pass the test with flying colors the first time. You don't need to spend 100, 200, even 300 bucks on a class. So this is what I did. By the way, nice carpet. The first thing you should do is watch Tony and Chelsea Northrup's awesome two-hour video, Free Drone Certification Study Guide, FAA Part 107 SUAS Test. Watch that video a couple times. It has almost everything you need to pass the test. The next thing you should do is learn how to read METARs and TAFs. Those are those cryptic weather reports you're never gonna use again for the rest of your life unless you become a real pilot, but it's on the test. Need to understand them. There's a link below for another video that kind of covers those. Practice that stuff. The next thing you need to learn how to do is how to read a sectional chart. This is a sectional chart. It's super confusing. It looks like somebody puked on a map. Take some time, watch YouTube videos about it. There's a link below for one that I liked. During the t Hey, Vahim. That was my buyer. He's gonna meet me here in a few minutes. During the test, you're gonna have access to a legend for a sectional chart. So you need to understand the sectional chart and use the legend because that's gonna give you some of the answers that you need. The last thing you wanna do is buy this app, Prepware Remote Pilot by ASA. It's five bucks, not sponsored by these guys. I just liked it, it helped me pass the test with a 93% the first time. The thing that's awesome about it is it has a study mode and a test mode. And in the study mode, you get explanations for the answers to the questions and the test mode lets you see if you're ready to take the test or not. If you're hitting 90% or more in the test mode, you're ready to take the test. Dude, this house looks like a model home, man. I wish all houses I showed looked like this. Nice job, Jenny. Hey, if you like this video, if you get any value, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like it, hit that thumbs down button twice. Don't go away yet. Right now I'm gonna show you how to schedule the test. All you need to do to schedule your test is call a testing center. Most of the testing centers are at FBOs at airports. An FBO is a fixed base operator, usually a flight school and or a place where you can rent planes. I went to the one near my house in Camarillo. There is a link below 
which you can click on and just punch your zip code in and it'll list all of the uh, nearby testing centers. You just call them, schedule your appointment. Usually they can do it like same day or next day even. There are certain times that they have a proctor there. The proctor will set you up in a room with a camera to make sure everybody stays on the up and up. I'm about to take my part 107 test and I'm, I think I studied enough, but I have anxiety so I'm a little terrified. That's my proctor, Caitlin. She's Hi. gonna make sure I ace it, right Caitlin? Yeah, I'm gonna give you all the answers. Sweet! And you'll have two hours to finish the test. The test is 60 to 63 questions. You have two hours, but it only took me 45 minutes. Okay, I did it. Went into that place, took my part 107 SUAS exam, and I passed, Woo! Got 92%. On the one hand, the test isn't super hard. There's only three multiple choice possibilities per question. And you could probably fake your way through, you know, maybe half of it. Some of the questions are silly and common sense. Some you need to know something. So you really need to understand METARs, TAFs, sectional charts. And you also want to understand the different types of airspace that are out there. So you know when and when you can't fly your drone on any of the more modern drones, you're going to be told by your controller or by your app that, oh, you're in class B airspace, don't fly here. And if you're really not supposed to fly there, your drone will prevent you from even taking off. But you wanna understand what your controller is saying to you and you wanna check it out before you get there so you don't waste your time going to places where you aren't able to fly your drone. And unfortunately, there are less and less places where it's legal to fly your drone, but you should really know what they are. If you spend like a half or a day for a couple of weeks studying, you should pass the test with flying colors. And also, if you're not sure which drone to get, I made a video for, especially for you realtors, which drone should you get for your real estate business? Not specifically towards listing videos, but for all the other kinds of videos that I make to market my business. There's a link for it right there if you wanna check it out. Now go pass that test, fly safely, and make some awesome videos. I'll see you in the next one. Glad I was done. It was actually harder than I thought. You should take it though, you need it. Mm.